what he's seen, what he's done, and where he's going. We're going to talk about it all. Greg Adams next on the Chris Top Program. The Top, broadcasting live to at least three people on Spreaker.com. I am the Dorkinator. I was sent from the future to make the world a safer place for all of the dorks. My primary objective is to Dorkinate anyone who gets into my way. If you are not a dork, I will pummel your head between my mighty dorky thighs until you're Dorkinated. I will smash you in the dorkhood like the little puny sissy baby you are. The future will be better for all dorks of the world. Now I have to get to the job. <laughs> Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either take in the crystal I am the one and only crystal. The Chris Top Program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from our lavish home studio here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. How in the hell are you doing, world? Sup? So, you want to spend the rest of the day just chilling and drinking ginger tea? Is that no. what you had in mind? No, that's I not wish you could have seen your face. That was disgusting. Yeah, it's probably a little, little more, um, a little hotter, I guess, when you when you get down to like the last sip. It's just gross. It burns your throat, doesn't it? It's like it's like the same thing as that jalapeno candy from Hey Sugar Shop. It I wasn't just, that hot. I don't like that. It's just spicy. I mean, I like hot and spicy stuff, but when it burns your throat like that, it's disgusting. But it goes away fast. It doesn't linger. Uh, it felt like it lingered a little bit. I just, I like it. I, I think it's good, and I, it helps me with my circulation. Hey, if it helps you, that's good, but it ain't doing me no favors. Yeah. So, I'm a little skeptical about that, that white powdery stuff that we got. I hope it works. Why are you skeptical? I just am. I mean, I, um, I forgot what it was even called, but we stopped by uh, Season's Market and talked to Shawnee and, and her friend. And I can't remember her friend's name. I wish I could, because she was really sweet. Um, but she recommended that, because... Um, they were out of the coconut oil, and that's what I was wanting to get because it's supposed to help shed some pounds, mm-hmm. you know, on top of our daily exercise and all that. So I was hoping to, to get that today, but she recommended that, so maybe we can try both. Yeah, I think trying both would be a good idea. And see what happens. But what if, what if when you mix the two, like, you gain weight? I don't think you do. I don't know. I mean, I it's, know. it's always that possibility. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> throwing that out there. I mean, it's. I doubt it too. But I mean, there's always like you know, you're not supposed to mix certain things, and yeah. I mean, it might I have adverse could, effects. Yeah. When we go back there, I guess we could ask them. Well, they're supposed to call me when they get the the coconut oil in. Yeah. So. so then you could just ask them. Yeah. I, I've drink. I've drank coconut water before, and I hated it. So I'm hoping the oil. If I just have to take like a teaspoon or two, I can just do that do and that, just be yeah. done. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I'm not a big fan. But I mean, if it's if it's going to help me propel myself into a healthier me, then then, then it's you got to do it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, then I'll do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, just you know, whatever. But so we got to take this five days a week, along with our other stuff. We're taking pollen too, mm-hmm. and I know for a lot of people that might might sound kind of crazy, but last this last summer we we had a little bout with being sick for almost two months, and we think it has a lot to do with allergies and stuff as I, I don't know I it, maybe it did maybe it didn't but we're trying to avoid that next year so I went in and I was asking for local honey because if you if you eat local honey then it's supposed to help you develop um, 
sort of an immunity to like pollen and things like that in mm-hmm. your community. So, um, but they recommended if I wanted to avoid the sugars from the honey, just to eat the pollen. Yeah, so that's what we did. So that's we're eating pollen. We're eating pollen. I haven't taken my dose yet today. Yeah, I took mine. I took mine last night and today. So, yeah, and that's five days a week too. And then the multivitamins every day, and then I'm taking some other stuff for my knee and other stuff. I don't even know what I'm taking so anymore. Good. There's so much. Yeah. I feel like we have a pharmacy. We do a little like bit. An all natural <laughs> pharmacy. But it's better kitchen. than taking all these pills. <clears throat> yeah, I guess so. This like is it's a better lot than better. taking cocaine or something. <laughs> that anything's better than that. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know, we don't do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we've got Greg Adams coming up on the show next. Um, kind of a, a pop feeling country sound kind of thing Woo-woo. going on. Um, but he's pretty cool. We got a chance to meet him and, and hang out with him for a minute at uh, the Row in Nashville, I guess a month or two ago ish. We were there to see uh, Craig and Angela Cheslock, and then uh-huh. he was there, and we, we got to meet a few people that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. I think so, I remember him now. So Yeah, yeah I think um, it's cool because I feel like we're in the loop these days. Like, you know, when Here we, we go places now, people, like, know who we are. So I wonder sometimes if they see us first, if they, if, if they like, run away. <laughs> Or if they Why would actually, they run away? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a little insecure sometimes. And I think maybe, oh, if I see Chris first, he won't see me. You know, that kind of thing. You got to build up your swagger, bro. Yeah, I need to work on my swag for sure. Swag. That's, yeah, that's no joke. MySpace is a mess, and I'm in distress. Who am I going to call? Magnolia Emporium. Randy's clients range from nurses, teachers, actors, and even some royalty thrown in there. They want your space to reflect your success. 37 Lincoln Street on the corner of South Church and Lincoln. Find them on the web at magnoliaemporium.com or simply give them a call. 704-248-6808. Magnolia Emporium, along with BB Kings, a proud sponsor of the 2016 Waba Awards. Wait, is that a drill? I figured I'd work on some home improvement stuff. Where did you get a drill? It doesn't matter because now I have the power. Bruh, you don't even know how to use a drill. Oh, I know how to use a drill. Chris, you're going to hurt yourself again. Just call Exact Construction. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty manly. Look, just call Drory at Exact Construction. They handle electrical, plumbing, carpentry, drywall, painting, wood flooring, repair, remodel, and service calls. They do everything. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What's the number? 931-809-8098. That's exact construction done exactly how it should be. Exact construction. That's X-A-C-T construction. A proud sponsor of the Chris Top program. You are absolutely, positively, 100% for sure in the right place. This is the Chris Top program. And I want to thank each and every one of you uh, that listen to us on iHeartRadio. If it's a podcast uh, and you're listening later on, uh, maybe on Stitcher, on Spreaker, on the com live. It, when you listen live, it's cool because you get to join the voices in our head. And that's, that's really, really important. Yeah, because then you get to ask questions and you get to leave comments. You get to, you know, say, like, hey, Chris, you suck. We love Greg. That kind of thing. So, <laughs> you suck, Chris. Yeah. Get off the microphone. Yeah, let Greg have it because he's the reason we're here today. It's not, you know, not you know, the Chris Top program for sure. Uh, but, but we do appreciate you guys. And I, I know, and I say this every show, and, I, and, I, and the reason I say it is because I mean it. Uh, we don't take you for granted. We're never going to take you for granted because there's a million things you could be doing, but you chose to listen to us. It makes us feel really good. Uh, so, Greg, uh, what have you been up to for the last couple of months? Because it's been about that long since I've seen you, or maybe a month and a half, something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just still kind of getting acclimated with Nashville. I moved to Nashville in May from New York. So how much of a culture shock is that? Like coming uh, it's from not much New of York a culture Nashville. shock as like a like a a geography shock and like the weather. Oh, are you used to the humidity yet, or probably not? No, nah, I'm still not. I think back home, it it's like sixty in the morning. Here, mm. you wake up and it's always ninety degrees. I bet you kind of missed that, but I, I bet when winter comes around and we've got like an inch of snow, you're not going to miss the the snow from New York. 
yeah, the New York snow for the past two or three years was you're shoveling yeah. five to a, f- a five inches to a foot of snow like every two weeks. Yeah. It felt like. like here it's it's brutal if we have like two inches and there's a dust. It's like everybody freaks out and I'm just sitting there laughing. Yeah, you can't find milk or bread <laughs> at the grocery store uh, because everybody's freaking out over an inch of snow. It gets it gets pretty crazy. Now, have your allergies been acting up since you've been here or or have you are you okay with that? I think right when I moved, I had a cold for about a week and a mm-hmm. sore throat, but I think I'm acclimated now. Okay. So and that's not good for a singer-songwriter. Mm-mm. No, no, it's it's brutal because then <laughs> yeah, you try you're like okay, I'll play this open mic or I'll play a show, and then when you sing, it really sets you back a day. So then the next morning you wake up ten times worse. You lose your voice, yeah. What you could do if that happens again, instead of singing your own stuff, you could just sing Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> you can just lip sync, and then you'll be fine. Well, no, he could sing because he sounds kind of like you know, you know, like uh-huh. that. So it, it would work. It would be fine. Um, so now you're, you're friends with our buddy Craig, right? Yeah. Craig Wilson. I'm, uh, I met Craig probably two years ago now. I met him at Douglas corner for a songwriter night. Okay. I got know. invited to, and then a year, almost a year, but last November I, I wrote a song, did like my first co-write pretty much ever with Craig and, uh, oh, started nice. our friendship and. Well, he's this, talented, man. Oh yeah, he's amazing, and he writes with everyone in town. It seems like yeah, he, he's like that's why I really admire his his work ethic, and I just love his sound, the way he writes too. He's an yeah. amazing. He's good. Guitar does he, player, does he songwriter. produce your stuff too? What does he produce your stuff? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, I recorded all my stuff before I moved to Nashville, mm-hmm. so I didn't know Craig yet when I was recording my second EP. Now, how would you describe your genre? Is it more pop or more country or a little bit of both? Or what do you think? Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, I always lean more towards pop when I upload it to mm-hmm. iTunes and Spotify. I always put it under singer-songwriter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always say it's kind of like John Mayer and Ed Sheeran meets a little country. Yeah, it, it, you know, I kind of I kind of get that vibe, too, when I listen to it. And... Do you think that's going to change a little bit uh, more toward the countryside now that you're in Nashville, or, or are you going to kind of hold true to your roots? Uh, I think I'll hold true to my roots. I just like some of the the sounds that uh, come out of country that people just call it country. Like, I love the steel pedal, banjo. I just love those instruments. Sure, yeah, and I think Craig's a good guy to work with, too, because uh, I think he can go either way with that stuff. Yeah, you know, he, so, he's great. Yeah. I mean, he works with... Some big country acts, and he works with a lot of pop acts, so he yeah yeah definitely fits that style. Mm, he's got a I good love. feel for all that. So I hope he's not mm. listening because he's going to get conceited. And we don't need that. Yeah, we don't need that because he's, he's already a, conceited a little bit. He's a little bit is. on the conceited side sometimes. Um, not re- not really. I love Craig to death, and he's uh, he's uh, he's definitely a good guy. So it's always exciting for me when I get to meet somebody in that circle that uh, that hangs out with Craig and knows him because I I haven't been disappointed yet. <laughs> so yeah it's it's a lot of fun now now how often um or do you ever get a chance to to go out and, and play gigs um in nashville or do you do a lot of songwriters nights around uh yeah i try to uh the first four months when i was here I, I played a lot uh september has been slow but i play uh like three at least three open mics every night if i don't have gigs oh wow yeah but i play I'll play like the listening room. They don't really do it in the fall, but on the weekends they have brunch. So I play for an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, a lot that's of it cool. original music, and yeah, I try to find gigs like those. Now, if I want to stalk you a little bit, how do I like? How do I know when you're going to be playing and where? Yeah, uh, the best place is uh, Facebook, and that's Greg Adams Music. Mm-hmm. And the best way to f- find that is just put it in as one word. As Greg uh, at Greg Adams music because if you put it as a space with Greg Adams, you find the Chicago trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> and Instagram well, and Greg Twitter, Adams, it's all Greg Adams, Adams music too. Gotcha. And Snapchat okay. and now if if I want to buy some of your music, I mean, do I just go there too and will it give me? Yeah, links? you can go. All my music's on iTunes and Spotify. 
Um, there's links on my website if you want a hard copy CD. Mm -hmm. That's gregadamslive.com. And okay. then also... Now, do you ship those out yourself? Yeah, I just... Uh, okay, so if I want a signature, if I want you to write something like, you know, Chris, you're the best, you're the greatest, you'll do that for me? Uh, yeah, so, I have... Okay. I think you can put that uh, on a request. If not, I, the ones that I ship out, I, I always sign them. Nice. Okay, I might have a whole like paragraph, like a little mini story for you to write. Yeah, <laughs> if I, if I can, I'll have to get the the fine print sharp pen. <laughs> yeah, whatever works. I mean, as long as we get it all on there, yeah. it, you know, it gives me cool points, and you know, people be like, "Oh, he hangs out with Greg Adams. He's got to be cool." So, you know, that's kind of what I'm what I'm shooting for there. Oh, well, that'd uh, be very nice of, if that's what people say about me. I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, you you are a cool guy. I mean, I could t I got some cool vibes from you. Uh, when I met you at the row, I wish that I got a chance to hang out with you a little bit longer. Um, we were there to, to see uh, Angela Sue, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of like didn't get a chance to, to say bye to you after that. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was really looking forward to hearing your stuff. And then when I when I finally did, I was like, yeah, he's he is a pretty cool Damn, guy. He's talented. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, Nashville's the right place for Greg. Yeah, he, yeah. I definitely yeah. think so. For me, it's all about uh, playing and performing, really. Whether you can make it as an artist or songwriter. Even if you're a songwriter, to get you have to play your songs if if you want to get a cut. But I'm more for just practicing and growing, meeting yeah. guys like Craig and absolutely. You just and meet some talented people to just learn from, really, and yeah, and, and inspired. You know, you've got to get that constructive criticism from people too, and and you've got to take the good with the bad, I guess. Um, let me give you a scenario, like a hypothetical. Say, um, say you walk into a, a Nashville studio, and there's some you know big guy there in the music industry, and and uh, he looks at you and says, "All right, Greg, you know you sound okay, but you're just not going to cut it here in Nashville. You need to go back home. You know it's just not going to work out for you." Like, how would you react to something like that? Uh, uh I probably wouldn't think much of it because uh, it's all about really believing in yourself and about putting in the work like I'm not really waiting around for someone and I probably think of it the same way as if someone told me I was like the next big thing it's all about mm, okay because I know uh, what I need to approve on at least I think to always be true mm -hmm. to yourself and and just really write every day write better songs the more you write the better you get now, so, are you, is and your I always know and with that it's always like if someone thinks you're great you're just like wait for uh, till next year, like when I'll be practicing even harder. So if someone says yeah. you're bad, and then it's like give it a year, and then they're they can completely have a different opinion on you too. So. Yeah, I love that positive outlook. That's uh, that's good, I and mean, you got to have that in the music industry because it it is brutal, mm -hmm. and especially in a place like Nashville where you know you've got people like uh, like Craig that that are more than willing to work with you and help you, but at the same time, you know it's it's just brutal and it's just it's an industry. And it's, it's it's not the easiest easiest place to write music, but when you do shine in Nashville, that's something big, uh, and it's something very special when you can do it in a place like Nashville for sure. Um, everywhere you go, you know, the person that cuts your hair, the person that you know brings your burger out or uh, does your nails or whatever. I mean, that you know, chances are they can probably sing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so, where's your heart at? Would it be more on on the uh, the writing side or more on the performance side? Oh, that's hard to say. I think it's both, really. Um, there's nothing. I love writing, but there's also that moment of when you share something and people react to it. Mm -hmm. That maybe something you thought like, oh, this is a great song. Like, I wonder what other people will think of that. Mm -hmm. And then when you play it and it gets mm -hmm. a reaction that you weren't expecting, I think it's all, I think that's my favorite part of sharing it. Sure. And Just getting the reaction people, no matter what it is. Yeah, it's very, I think it's, it's so hard because I think it's, I think it's both. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, if you, like, I think growing, I think for now it's songwriting and certain times, like in, I played in Chicago uh, almost a month ago, and the people were singing my songs back to me, and everyone was singing. So like a night like that, uh, nothing beats performing and people 
Yeah. You had to have been like, yes. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't always happen when you're first starting it. You're playing to sure. strangers that don't know your music, so you're trying to but grab their attention instead happen. of I bet when that people does happen, that are already yeah. invested in you, which is really cool to see. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like you've made it when, when they sing it back to you or when they know your, when they know your songs? I mean, is there a little taste of success in there? Yeah, and it, and that's only like forty to thirty people doing it, and it, there's no greater feeling. You're like, mm-hmm. okay, like there's something here, like this is special. Sure, I mean, you know, when you when you create something like that, just at, you know, with your mind and your heart, and you write it on paper, and then you, you know, you spend all that time on it, and you produce it, and then people are singing it back to you. That's it's that's got to be a big payoff, mm-hmm. I would think. Yeah, because it because it all it started from nothing, like. Mm-hmm. you created something that didn't exist or something that's wandering in your head and you play it on a guitar and then you write it down on paper or in your phone and then you record it. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. I and mean, then you put it out in the world. I've never and- experienced that. I won't even know. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to live through you <laughs> with stuff like that. Um, now I'm going to get a little personal with you and you can tell me to shut up if you want. You'd be like, Chris, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> um, now, do you have a girlfriend? I do. Okay. So how long have you been dating her? Uh, well, I guess since, uh, 5th of July of okay. this year. Okay. So relatively new. Now is she, uh, is she in Nashville as well? No, she lives in Boston. Okay. So you've got a long distance thing going on. Yeah. Um, is she, um, does she back you up a hundred percent or, or does she ever just wish you would just come back and, and hang Oh out? no, she, she's, uh, super supportive and always, uh, like my biggest critic and I always send her music and, she, and whether the story makes sense, she'll be like, that song's amazing. Or she'll be like, I don't get it. Like mm-hmm. the song's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she has a really yeah, good, good ear for, honesty. yeah. Um, she doesn't, she's not, doesn't play an instrument, doesn't write music, but when she listens, she listens to, she loves the story. And I think that's mm-hmm. the heart of every song is what story you tell. Yeah. I mean, you got to be a great storyteller. You got to be willing to, to put your feelings and emotions out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that takes a lot of nerve, I think, to do that, to mm-hmm. sort of put your, um, your stuff out there for everybody to see and critique. Takes guts. Yeah. It takes a lot of guts. I mean... You know, like with us, you know, we just kind of tell people what we want them to hear. But with, <laughs> with with Greg, I mean, he's got to lay it all out there to be successful, well, I think. Right. Well, I think it's it's no different than your job, really. Or I think it's it all starts when you have the idea. So, like, for you, it's probably you, you wanted to be a, a DJ and on the radio. I still want to. <laughs> but, but I think once you first start it, that takes guts to do something that most people don't think of doing or you do a job that you're passionate about or you think people might not support Mm -hmm. and then once you take that that jump and I think that's the same amount of courage of like putting a song out there yeah I never thought about it keep doing it I feel better about myself now (laughs) see see Greg's good for me you are yeah. the man, the myth, the <clears throat> legend, the one That's and true. only Chris Todd. That's true. I got to keep that mindset now. Now I can. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, when you're performing to the girls, are the girls like kind of crazy? Are they like, swooning? Yeah. Are they like? Uh, oh, no, you, it girl. depends. Yeah. Uh, Do they throw? I got played Douglas you? Corner last night. Yeah. And um, I was just like videoing myself just to hear it back. And I sent the song to my girlfriend. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, like, did you know anyone there last night? And I was like, no. She's like, oh, a lot of females screaming for you. Last <laughs> oh my goodness! One of those conversations. But it's, yeah. but it's not really. I think it was just. Uh, I think if it's more, like a like Douglas Corner, you're just there to play, like meet people. But if I have friends, um, like for instance, the reason why I played Chicago was because one of my best friends from home lives in Chicago. And her and all her friends were just visiting Nashville. And I played just for them in their their apartment that they Airbnb'd and beat and like they they just fell in love with it and it was like really cool to see that, like their reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, Okay, like like I'll come play Chicago, just bring some friends and we'll have a good time and that's what 
you know, we need to come spread the you. word. I want to come see you sometime. I want to see. I want to see you like at a songwriter's night because that's my favorite thing. I like um, getting the stories behind the songs and and just it's it's more of an intimate setting for me. Um, mm-hmm. Where's your heart at? I mean, is it more like you know playing for twenty or thirty people in that sort of a situation, or do you would you rather be on a on a big stage performing for thousands of people? Uh, it all depends. I think. For me, I'd love to see growth, but I think playing, it depends. I'd rather play for 20 to 30 people that everyone knows the song than 1,000 people that aren't paying attention. Mm, That's true. But I guess the goal is to get from 20 people singing along to 100 people singing along Mm -hmm. to 500 people singing along, then... If that makes any sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. So as long as people know your music and love your music, then you're good with it either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's people, yeah. and I think that happens if people start relating to your music or your story. Gotcha. Okay, so we got a little less than 20 minutes left, so I want to make sure we get both these songs in. And I'm going to start with uh, Lost and Found. So give me a little background on this. Where did this come from? Uh, it's just about... Um, for me, just like being in the moment with a girl you want to be with or uh, fell in love with and just get lost in the moment and just enjoy each other's company. I mean, this, I always say when I write it, this one's kind of sexual, so it's so a hold on or happy Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah. whatever day I'm playing. So. so this is Girlfriend Approved. She heard this one before you before you finished it? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so so it must be good then. Uh, <laughs> this is Lost and Found, Greg Adams, right here on the Chris Dot Program. Well, I've been thinking about what I love the most. I think it's the beauty mark above your lip, or how you scrunch your nose. But there's only one thing I can't live without It's the way you stare back at me Like no one is around So baby girl, get close for a minute Wrap you up in my arms cause you love it I'm hypnotized by your eyes that are glistening You got that glow from a mile away And the smart mouth of yours makes me say You make me feel dumb and I don't know how Every head turns when you're strutting through town Cause you're my girl And nobody knows what goes down when we get home So tangle over me between the sheets And grind your hips all over me Cause the world can wait as we go another round So let's get lost in each other and not be found Well your head resting on my chest Makes my pulse skip a beat and the dimples on your back and near heart attack They knock me to my knees But don't let the sun rise Take away the fight Just give me all your energy As we swim through the morning light So baby girl, get close for a minute Wrap you up in my arms cause you love it I'm hypnotized by your eyes that are glistening You got that glow from my Sit you down and I'll play you a song You'll have me sing it to you all night long And I don't mind cause you're right here next to me So baby girl get close for a minute Wrap you up in my arms You love it I'm hypnotized by your eyes that are glistening You got that glow from my way And that's my mouth of yours makes me say You make me feel dumb and I don't No, 
that's what I would have called baby making music <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. That was really good. Oh, and, thank you. Yeah, and I think you're right about uh, about that. It leans a little bit more toward the pop um, for sure, but it, I mean, it, it works, and you sound you sound great. I mean, I think that's definitely your niche. So I wouldn't. I don't think I would go out on a on a on a limb and like try to produce a, a full out country album because I think that might be a disaster for you because you are so good at that. But then I could be wrong. I mean, you might be. I don't know. I mean, a couple years in Nashville, you might be able to do it and, and be just fine. Yeah. But you are. Yeah, but I feel I feel like a lot of the pop music or a lot of the country music out there is very geared towards like a pop sound. Mm-hmm. A lot uh, of it is these days. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I think. Um, yeah, it doesn't, I feel like my music falls like right between the middle of, Mm -hmm. of those two. Well, yeah, you just keep doing what you do and, uh, it'll work out. I mean, as long as it works out like, um, like lost and found, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Okay. okay. So if you could have any superhero power, what would that power be? Ooh, I always, that's always hard. I always hear people get asked that question. I feel like the power to like breathe underwater. See, that would be kind of cool because I've often thought that, and nobody ever says that because I think they relate it to Aquaman. I was about to say, so you want to uh, be Aquaman? <laughs> All right. Aquaman wasn't exactly the coolest superhero. Yeah. Well, I guess for me, I love I love the ocean and yeah. and water or lakes, and but like there's so much that's unexplored. So I'd love to yeah. like. Because, like, you could fly, like, X-ray, like, you could be any X-Men or, but, like, I'd want to explore the unknown, you know? Yeah, and I'm with you. I think that would be, I think the solitude would be a lot of fun, and you could just kind of go down there and get lost. I mean, unless everybody did it, then it would mm-hmm. just be crowded and yeah, annoying. Yeah, annoying, but, yeah. But, yeah, if you just could do that by yourself, that would just be, because I like to snorkel and do stuff like that, <laughs> so, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, being Yeah, me to too, that. so I, was, I just, like, so I could just stay underwater the whole time and never I guess yeah. that's scuba diving but yeah but you wouldn't have to worry about all those tanks and yeah without the fear of running out of drowning or getting yeah. the bends or something None crazy silly stuff <laughs> so, <laughs> no that's pretty cool I, I that's pretty cool I'm glad somebody finally said that see nobody ever says yeah that. everybody wants yeah. to fly yeah everybody wants to fly or just, just do other you know. or like invisibility yeah I can only say I can't really sound excited about people that want to fly much anymore yeah I just I <laughs> I, I'm not even like I don't even try to like mask my own excitement. I go, right. oh, really, really, all the different things you Why? do, and you want to fly. All the that things just sucks. Yeah. Okay. So so lost and found. Now you said you've got in November, but it's not posted yet on on Facebook. But uh, you've got a, like a writers round at the listening room. Yeah, we're playing. Uh, I believe it's Wednesday, November second. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm actually going to write that down. Yeah, so Wednesday, November second at eight thirty. November second at eight thirty. Now, is, uh, it, is it just you that night, or are there other artists? No, as it's well? me and three other of my roommates. So, oh, it's okay. Ten twenty six Iverson Ave takes over the listening room, and it's uh, yeah, it's that's why I love Nashville. Like all my roommates are uh, crazy talented and all different types of genres. So it's me. Um, Alec McGilvery, Amanda Watkins, and Cal Ecker. Dude, I bet you guys never sleep. I bet like when y'all get home and you like you're sitting around, you just like do all kinds of creative stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, what, my favorite time is when we all sit around and uh, and just play songs on the either in the house or we have a, a nice little front porch. Mm-hmm. Everybody just get their guitar out and just go crazy. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the other roommates are really good at harmonies mm-hmm. and just playing in general. So, so you just got to hold. You get more right voices there. on your yeah. songs. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Good to go. Yeah, so yeah. that's how you do it in Nashville. It really is. You know, you live it and you breathe it every day. Mm-hmm. You got roommates that are all talented, and people that you meet every day are talented. And it's definitely not hard to lose you. the passion there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you know, you might come home one night uninspired and then next thing you know 10 minutes later boom boom inspired yeah Mm -hmm. it's back it's like magic and it happens i don't care how much you love something i mean you know you're gonna have days where it's like "Ah, i really don't want to ride or i don't want to do this Mm -hmm. but then it just hits you again and sometimes it's good to take some time off yeah but yeah i mean it sounds like you've uh you've got it going on so nashville was was a good move no uh you don't you don't feel like you made any you know mistake coming here you feel like this is where you need to be Oh yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. For yeah. just yeah, to play, to be inspired. Cuz New York and every cuz everything's so close in New York, all every open mic is like an hour drive, half hour drive or you have to take the train into the city. Right, right. In Nashville, everything is 10, 15 minutes away and yeah, you meet someone new yeah. every night that yeah. either inspired by or you want to write with or just get to know. It's really fr- everyone's really friendly and supportive of each other, I think. Yeah, that's cool. I'd love to come and see you. Um I'm going to mark that on my calendar. Maybe we can work that out cuz it's on a Wednesday and I'm usually usually pretty free on Wednesdays. So we might try that out. I might schedule some early shows that day and then try to make it out there. Yeah, it'd be it'll be uh definitely real fun. Like everyone can can sing and play. So you know, I get to meet your roommates and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I think so and Amanda yeah. uh she she's under a part of Garth Brooks's management, I think too. Oh, cool. So yeah. she's got a few connections. Yeah. Well, I think it's Garth Brooks's manager's son who is all a part of uh, the same company. I think. I, I have no idea. Who knows? But. It's Nashville. You never mm-hmm. know. Never. Somebody <laughs> never knows know who somebody. You to. I mean, you'll be at a songwriter's night, and then you know somebody will break out some like number one hit, you know, and and it's just like, They'll be like, oh, yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, and there, it's like no big deal for them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just, what. Let's play it. My first songwriter night was with Craig. There was like someone wrote like a Josh Groban song, mm-hmm. like Celine Dion cuts, yeah. Kenny Chesney cuts, and I was just like, "What did I just get myself into?" <laughs> <laughs> Is it a little intimidating? I mean, you know, New York's a pretty pretty artsy kind of place too. You know, I mean, but but you came to Nashville for music, and that's kind of the place that you need to be. I mean. New York's probably as good, and so is you know Cali- you know San Diego, places like that. But I mean, was it a little bit intimidating for you, or did you you just feel like you just fit right in when you came? Uh, it wasn't really intimidating. I was just more like, this is really cool. Like how, I'm like, yeah, it just kind of felt. It felt I wasn't intimidated because I think I was I was a part of the night. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, like my name's next to all these people who have had so many cuts. Like mm-hmm. I haven't had anything, but to still be in the same room and yeah, play the same cool. stage, it's like, okay, like this is really cool and inspiring. That is cool. I didn't think about it like that. Cause if you can just at least share the same stage with somebody like that, it's got to do something for your, you know, for your morale. Definitely. I guess. Yeah. I would think I never thought about, it. see, it's nice to get that perspective. Mm hmm. There's um, always two sides to every coin. That is very <laughs> true. That is very true. Uh, now, we got about six minutes left, so I want to make sure I get uh, ready for you in here. Uh, now, tell me about this song. Yeah. Uh, so I had the EP. This was the last song uh, we recorded, and my producer, Joey Ock, we had. We just wanted to try writing together, and we just had. And I had the title of the EP as, like, uh, Make Up My. Uh, make up your mind so we we kind of wrote off that idea and it's just about um like wanting to be with someone at a certain time but uh like that's when you were ready like you knew that was the right person to be with but Mm -hmm. they weren't unsure so then you have to split up and go separate ways and then that person comes back and you're like, well, wait a second. Like, I was ready for you a year ago. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's kind of like the flip flop of that. Yeah, that's kind of so we wrote, to everybody. That's relatable. We wrote off yeah. uh, that idea and uh, the whole, uh, the coursey part of when I was ready for you is I uh, can't make up my mind. So that fits the, the theme of the. The EP. That's very relatable. I think a lot of people have been in that situation. Uh, yeah, and it was really cool when we released uh, the new EP in uh, June 17th. It went to number 43 on the singer-songwriter charts for oh, congratulations. for albums. So that That's was cool. a really cool little milestone that I like to share. Yeah, see, so now, see, now I can say that I know Greg Adams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it, it gives me, definitely gives me cool more, points. More cool points, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm racking them up today. Like a uh, bow. I know, I know. Uh, okay, so when we come back, we're going to talk about, um, before we close the show, we'll talk about uh, who Greg would most like to have that 
special cup of coffee with? Yeah. Because people, for some reason, like that question. It's I don't a good know. question. It is a good question. It can get pretty deep sometimes. It can. It can. It can. Uh, but before that, we're going to play Ready For You, Greg Adams on the Chris Top Program. On your lips, ocean in your eyes I was caught in your riptide The girl of my dreams Dancing with me in the moonlight I can't believe how close I came to loving you I thought you felt the same But you had to go and throw it all away There's a summer breeze blowing in the air tonight But it's gonna feel like winter Say goodbye Cause I can't make up my mind Can't make up my mind I got your burning hot body Pressed up to mine But I got cold feet And I think I know why I can't make up my mind Can't make up my mind Cause you're asking me to stay When you know I'll fall apart But I'm giving you my heart When you have my heart I was ready for you Day of baby making music right here on the Chris <laughs> Top program. Ready for you, Greg Adams. What'd you think about it? I really liked that song. Yeah. I was like, yeah. But I mean, doesn't it make sense though? I mean, like, what are you saying? It like, kind of puts it kind of put me in a trance a little bit. So I was yeah. Just like, you you kind of like go back and forth a lot, and sometimes the timing's just never right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess maybe that just it just wasn't meant to be. Sometimes 
it's you're maybe, sad. Yeah, once you, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it makes you think about stuff. Right. Uh, it makes you think, and I like that. I mean, you know, baby making music can be like thought provoking as well. <laughs> True that. So, so that's good. That's a good. It's nice to have both. I think in the song. Okay, so it was really catchy and it put me in a trance and I love it. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it. Well, thank you. You can hear mm-hmm. it in the club. I'd be like yeah. popping, locking, jamming, breaking into club. Greg just got all like Elvis. He's like, well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's my New York Southern accent. Coming through. <laughs> uh, so if you could have a cup of coffee with anybody, Greg, uh, and this could be anybody living or dead, doesn't matter. We'll bring them back to life for five minutes. Who would it be? I think I've been thinking about it. I think I, I'd really want to meet George Washington. Oh, okay. I don't know if anybody's ever said George Washington. Hmm. All right, I think everyone, so. I guess all musicians would say musicians, but I guess definitely in this day and age, I definitely want to talk to founding fathers and like the first president ever and just see like what they thought the future would hold. Do you think he would be really hacked off at the way things are going? Oh, I have no. That's what that's that'd be like the whole point. I right. think. Yeah. I, I definitely. I you would hope so. They would be, but at the same time, I'd love to go back to see what they really were like. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. It would be interesting. It'd be well, interesting like if to their see morals what the and their left out. If they had the same morals as us now, or. Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I always picture them being a little more, you know, conservative and having like um, probably stronger moral fiber than than we have today. Um, yeah, that's that's what I I definitely. Think. Yeah. I mean, they, but they then had again, slavery, you so might be hanging like, out behind the cherry tree with George smoking a doobie. You never know. <laughs> so it could go either way, maybe. Yeah, or maybe Abe Lincoln too would be a better one. Oh, uh, be. Abe Lincoln. He's could like be cool my, to he's hang my out favorite with Abe president. For a while. Yeah. yeah. You just like him because he's on the penny. No, I like I've, I've liked opinion, Abraham but. Lincoln's been my favorite president since I was fifteen. Okay, okay. So I like Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Him and Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I'm a Reagan man. I'd, I'd like to sit down with Reagan if I had to. If I was going to choose a president, it'd be Ronald Reagan. I think. I think I would still choose Lincoln. Lincoln over Reagan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. That's your opinion. Yeah, that's I mean, my yeah. opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so Greg, I want to stalk you. So I go to gregadams.com. Is that the website? Oh, uh, my website's gregadamslive.com. Gregadamslive.com. Okay. And so, then okay. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it's all Greg Adams Music. Okay, so Greg, Adam, Greg Adams Live. Now, if they go to your website, well, is there links to all your other stuff? Yeah, every, there's links everywhere on my website. Okay, so they can see pictures, they can read your bio, they can find out where you're going to be playing, uh, buy your music, all that stuff. Yep, you'll find... Uh, Links to events, uh, old news articles. You'll find my Spotify page, iTunes, uh, hard copy CDs if you want to buy merchandise. I ran out of T-shirts, but there'll be T-shirts and CDs up there too. Okay, and 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 you're you're will, more than willing to write a paragraph for somebody on the CD. Yeah, if uh, I gotta check if you can request something like that, like. Can you write that? But I think you might be because I use the an app that. Uh, well, I feel like we're close enough now where I could just like probably text you or email you. Yeah, like, hey, Greg, you have my number. Me. Hook me up, man. Mm, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see. I'll see uh, your name of who bought it, and then I'll know. Gotcha, gotcha. See, he'll know. He'll know yeah. that I want him to just tell some. Some crazy lies and give me cool points. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just, I'll just, you don't even have to buy it. I'll just, I'll send you one. Well, see, he's nice. He's nice like that. I don't mind buying it though, because I, I, I want to support you and I want you to, to, to keep writing music. And you know what? We haven't done this in a while, but uh, Allie, why don't you do your public service announcement before we go away? It's about to go down in okay. this town. Okay. Go ahead. So when an artist sells their music on iTunes and, and just different websites like that, you buy it. You don't use that software to go and steal it. But I got software. I can just play it off YouTube and record it, and I, I can download it to iTunes. It's easy. Uh, yeah, it might be easy, but that's not what you should do okay. because okay. these – these artists, they are trying to make money off of their music so they can make more music and make oh. their dreams come true. Mm-hmm. And if gotcha. you're stealing it, you're kind of robbing them of that person's dream. So mm. that's really kind of awful. Okay. So don't do it. And if I catch you stealing music, 
I'll do you something for you. Mm-hmm. I will hunt you down. Oh my goodness! How about that? I'll do you a favor. Oh my goodness! So I'm never down. gonna steal music ever. Better not. That. Yeah, yeah. We had the cops call on us one time, and mm -hmm. and she got in trouble. Yeah, um, it was epic. Yeah. I got um I got um arrested for disturbing the peace. Yeah, that's back when we um lived in the apartment. Yeah, that's why we got a house. <laughs> that was the main reason. Uh, but yeah, it's important. Just skip a cup of uh, Starbucks coffee one day, and you can go out and 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 pretty much buy a whole EP or an album. Uh, off of iTunes, uh, Greg Adams, or whoever your favorite independent artist is, just make sure you support them and, and show them some love and, and buy their stuff for sure. Uh, Wait, can I say uh, one thing? Absolutely. Remember, uh, when I sell my CDs um, at live shows, I give a lot of the proceeds to uh, veterans, and I've been doing that since last 9 11 because I had a show at mm. Rockwood Music Hall in New York City. And to this day, I've raised. Thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, so that's, that's really, really cool. cool. Merchandise. Uh, so that's there really we go. Yeah, more of a reason to go to gregadamslive.com dot com and uh, buy some music uh, because a lot of that, uh, a lot of those proceeds will go to uh, the veterans. That's really cool. I appreciate you doing that, Craig. Yeah, uh, well, I appreciate everyone that has served our nation. My grandfather fought in World War II, so that's why I like to give back and support yeah. any way I can. Well, it's all coming together now. It's making more sense why you want to meet George. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is it my turn to take us out? Or is it yeah, good? it's your turn. Okay. I, think, I think it's your turn. I'm okay. not sure. Uh, like I said before, I do not take you guys for granted. Never, ever will. Um, until we broadcast again, please remember this. Life is good. We're gone. Maybe a door things might be looking grim. I guess it's time. Two, three, four. W, L, B.